the first Cabinet meeting of the Labour Government of 2024. At that Cabinet meeting, I had the opportunity to set out to my Cabinet precisely what I expect of them in terms of standards, uh, delivery, uh, and the trust that the country has put in them. And yesterday, I met Laurie Magnus, the Independent Advisor on Standards, to discuss how we deliver in government. At the Cabinet meeting, I also discussed mission delivery, how we would put into action the plans that we had set out in our manifesto, and that we will have mission delivery boards to drive through the change that we need, and that I will be chairing those boards to make sure that it's clear to everyone uh, that they are my priority in government. Uh, we also talked about preparations for the King's Speech, um, and I reminded the entire Cabinet um, that we will be judged on actions, not on words. Um, and um, this afternoon, I will continue to make uh, a number of front bench appointments. We clearly, on Thursday, got a mandate uh, from all four nations. For the first time in 20 plus years, uh, we have a majority in England, in Scotland, and in Wales. And that is a clear mandate uh, to govern for all four corners of the United Kingdom. And therefore, I shall set off tomorrow to be in all four nations. I shall go first to Scotland. I shall then go to Northern Ireland, then to Wales, and then back to England, where I will meet the First Ministers, not just to discuss the issues and challenges of the day, uh, of course, we will do that, but also to establish a way of working across the United Kingdom that will be different and better to the way of working that we've had in recent years, and to recognise the contributions of all four nations. On Thursday, we also got a mandate on economic growth, the number one mission of the Labour government. And so we discussed at Cabinet and have started the work on driving growth and to make sure that growth is everywhere across the whole country so that people are better off everywhere, wherever they live. The principle I operate to is those with skin in the game know what's best for their communities. Uh, and that does require us to be bold about pushing power and resource out of Whitehall. And therefore, when I return uh, from the Four Nations, I shall hold a meeting of the Metro Mayors to discuss with them their part in delivering the growth that we need across the United Kingdom. That will be on Tuesday. That will include non-Labour Metro Mayors. There's no monopoly on good ideas. Um, and I'm not a tribal politician. And the principle I operate to, whether it's mayors or other elected representatives, is that where regional leaders want to deliver for their area, then regardless of the colour of their rosette, my door is open and my government will work with them. Later on Tuesday, I shall set off to Washington for the NATO summit. I've already had a number of international calls, as you will know and as you would have expected, uh, to establish the relations across with other countries, to have really important discussions about Ukraine and other pressing issues, and Washington will be an opportunity for me to have further discussions with some of the leaders I've already spoken to and some that I'm due to speak to. It is, of course, an important summit on NATO. It is uh, for me to be absolutely clear that the first duty of my government is security and defence, to make clear our unshakable support of NATO, um, and of course uh, to reiterate, as I did to President Zelensky yesterday, um, the support that we will have in this country and with our allies towards Ukraine. So this will be a politics and a government that is about delivery, is about service, Self-interest is yesterday's politics. I want a politics and a country that works for you. Thank you very much. And I will now take a number of questions, starting, I think, with Chris. 
Thank you, Prime Minister. Chris Mason, BBC News. You've said that change can't be delivered by flicking a switch, but plenty of people might want lots of switches flicked pretty quickly. And so I wonder how soon you could actually start delivering concrete change. And if I may, um, have you unpacked yet? Have you found your way around? Uh, well, they're two different questions. Um, look, I'm restless for change, and I think and hope that what you've already seen um, demonstrates that, uh, not least the appointment yesterday of Patrick Vallance and James Timpson, um, two individuals who are associated with change and delivery. And it won't surprise you to know uh, that the discussions I had yesterday uh, with them were not the first discussions I've had with them. We've been talking to them for some time about the need for the change that we will put in place. But look... years it is going to take time but we've started uh, we've got plans in place um, up until uh, the election I was clearly not wanting to get ahead of the election result but we have been planning for months uh, hitting the ground running I have had extensive conversations myself as has the now cabinet with all those that they need to deliver with which are uh, to ensure that we can hit the ground running and put into place the plans that we need there'll be further announcements coming over coming days. But that preparation has been extensive over the last uh, six months. I've required all of my now cabinet uh, to have gone through on their brief the decisions that need to be taken, the people they're going to talk to in relation to those decisions. That work has been going on for six months or more, um, and that means we can hit the ground running. But look, um, it is not an overnight exercise changing the country. Thank you, Chris. I'll go to Beth, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, Prime Minister, you have won a massive majority, but your vote share is quite low. It's much lower in terms of voter support than Blair in 1997. You talk about the mood of the country. I think you have some ideas as to why. Can you give us one concrete thing that you will promise voters you will deliver in your first 100 days to make them believe the change message. And if you'd indulge us, millions of people saw that exit poll drop. Some of them gasped. What was your emotion when you saw it? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Look, the, the, the thing that's changed already is the mindset of government. It's a mindset of service, of country first, party second. That's not a slogan. That is the test for all of our decisions. So when submissions come to me from the cabinet, when I've to, had to take decisions, which I've already had to, of course, the, the principle is country first, party second, and that's the driving principle. So that change has already happened. I set out um, before the election what our first steps will be. We've started work on those first steps. You've seen where Streeting make clear the steps he's already taking to resolve some of the issues that have been unresolved uh, for some time, with a degree of raw honesty as well as to the state of being. So that's the mandate, that's uh, how we go forward. And look, you know, in relation to the outcome on Thursday, it is a clear mandate. Uh, we argued for change, we've got that mandate, and we've got it in for all four nations, and that is really important for us um, as well. Um, I was pleased to see that exit poll. Um, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't believe it until, um, like everybody else, I stayed up to watch every single result come in. Um, peppered with the speeches I gave, including the one at 5 a.m. at the uh, event that we held. But it was only as the final results came through that um, I was confident that we'd got to where we needed to be to do the work that we need to do. Um, Chris, I didn't answer the second part um, of your... As to finding my way around, I've got uh, a basic understanding of the rooms I've used so far here, um, and that's good, but there are plenty of hidden places I'm yet to discover... Um, and no, we're not unpacked uh, quite yet, but we will be um, soon and we'll be moving in soon. But uh, there's a bit of work to do before then. Of course, I'm off to Washington on Tuesday. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, Robert. Uh, Robert Preston, uh, IT Read. Um, Prime Minister, you talk about the need for a reset. One of the lessons of Labour governments is the need to take the tough decisions early. We've already heard from Wes Streeting 
that in his view the policy now of the NHS is that it is broken. If in the coming weeks as you go through department by department you find that things are worse than you expected, are you prepared to take tough decisions early, including possibly raising more from taxation? And then secondly, just on, on Beth's point uh, about how you've won the biggest majority relative to the size of the vote in history, in history. Um, you said yesterday that your priority would be to gun for those who didn't vote for you. Some 80% of British voters didn't vote for you. That's including those who didn't vote at all. What does that mean in practice, in a sense, for the culture of the government and how you're governed? Uh, thank you, Robert. Look, in relation to the tough decisions, we're going to have to take the tough decisions and take them early, and we will. Um, we will do that with a raw honesty. Uh, and that's really what sat behind West Streeting's description yesterday of the NHS as being broken. Uh, it is. Everybody who uses it and works in it knows that it is broken, and we're not going to operate under the pretense or language that doesn't express the problem as it is, because otherwise we won't be able to fix the problem as quickly as we need to. And we'll continue in that vein. There are other issues. Prisons would be an obvious example. Uh, where uh, other parts of the system are broken, and we're going to have to approach that with a raw honesty um, as well, and we will take the tough um, decisions. But uh, that is not a, a, a sort of prelude to saying um, there's some tax decision that we didn't speak about before we're about to announce now. It's about the tough decisions to fix the problem of being honest about what they are. On the second part of your question, um, it was very important to me to say what I said on the steps yesterday about those that didn't vote for us because we're a government of service um, to all people, whether they voted for us or not. Um, and I include within that people who voted Labour for the first time on Thursday because across the country in many places people will have voted Labour for the first time, perhaps never having voted Labour before, and I recognise that, um, and that they've put their trust and confidence in us. Um, and we have to repay that, so we hold them in our mind's eye. People who didn't vote for us um, need to know that we will serve them, that we will not turn our back on people just because we don't think they voted for us. We'll govern for the whole uh, country, and that's what I meant by what I said yesterday. It's about taking the country forward um, and doing that you know, in conjunction with our first ministers, doing that in conjunction with our mayors and other elected representatives, uh, across the areas so that we can govern for the whole of the country and take the country forward and turn our back on tribal politics um, and simply picking issues we want to fight just for the party politics of it. That's what's gone wrong, in my view, in the last few years, uh, where priorities are simply set by party advantage rather than country uh, first. And that's a, an example of what I mean by country first, party second. And um, that's the approach we'll take. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Paul Tenenbaum. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Um, firstly, have you got used to hearing yourself get called that yet? And secondly, if I may, um, just pick up on Chris's point there, that you said progress isn't going to be like flicking a light switch, you've said that it's going to take a while, but for people at home who are feeling pinched, who are feeling desperate, when can they expect things to start getting any better? A year from now, two years from now, before the next election, or perhaps never? Uh, well, look, on the first question, um, yes, I'm getting used to it. I'm very happy to be called uh, Keir or Prime Minister. I do recognise, and I said this to the civil service yesterday, why for them some, it is important to refer to the office holder as Prime Minister because they're serving the office. I recognised this when I was Director of Public Prosecutions, and it's not, it is actually important to them uh, to use the title because it reinforces in them what they are doing by way of public service, and I respect that and understand that. I'm perfectly happy to be called Keir, but I do recognise uh, why um, that happened. On the, look, on change, the work has started, um, and we will deliver change as quickly as we can, and that will include change you know, within the early months and years of the government. It won't be a question of simply saying nothing's going to change until towards the end of the uh, first term, but different change will be delivered at different speeds, inevitably. Uh, what I can't pretend is that we can fix everything overnight. 
Uh, the obvious example of that is the mess the government, or the last government, made in relation to prisons. Um, they mismanaged the building programme. Half the money hasn't been spent. The tough decisions weren't taken on planning. We don't have the prisons we need, um, and I can't build a prison in 24 hours. Um, but we can get to grips with the planning aspect of that straight away. We can push on. Half the money has not been spent, and we will do that straight away, but it will take time. Thank you very much. Uh, Aggie from LBC. You've mentioned prisons now a couple of times, Prime Minister. I wonder whether you agree with your new prisons minister that only a third of people in prisons should definitely be there? Well, look, the, the prison minister has huge experience here and uh, has invested a huge amount over many years in relation to prisons, and that's why I wanted to make that appointment. We do need to be clear about the way in which we use prisons. We need to get away from the fact that uh, for so many people come out of prison, they're back in prison relatively quickly afterwards. That is a massive problem uh, that we have in this country that we do need to break. And that's why uh, I was very pleased to uh, put James into post, someone who uh, hasn't just talked the talk, has actually walked the walk for many years um, in this respect. And uh, I think he's, I was very pleased to make that uh, appointment, very pleased to have spoken with him um, you know, about the change that uh, we can bring about. Thank you. I'll go to Caroline. Very much, Caroline Wheeler from the Sunday Times, and congratulations, Prime Minister, Thank on you. your victory. Um, it seems to be a theme here that we're talking about. You want to hit the ground running. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of the NHS, when can you commit to getting those 40,000 additional appointments up and running? Is that something you can do within the first year? And as you head uh, out towards NATO, um, how quickly do you think that you can reach 2.5% uh, on defence spending um, in terms of GDP? And if I may, just something very close uh, to my heart. Will you recommit to the previous government's proposals to compensate the victims of the contaminated blood scandal, which is estimated to cost £12 billion? Uh, let's you. do those in reverse order. The, the, the third answer is yes. It's very important for reasons that you know better than most in terms of your personal involvement um, in the campaign that led ultimately to uh, a belated but at least better uh, outcome. So yes is the answer to that. O on the 2.5%, look, we are committed to it um, for all the reasons I said in the campaign. It will have to be done within our fiscal rules, um, and it will be done within our fiscal rules. But the strategic review um, will start shortly uh, of um, our capabilities um, and an assessment of what is needed where. That we can do straight away. But the commitment to 25 is real, uh, but it will be within our fiscal rules and we will not be tempted as the last government was to pretend that money is there now which isn't there. In relation to the NHS uh, and particularly the 40,000 extra appointments the work on that starts straight away and the way we will approach this is in St Thomas's Hospital just across the way and other hospitals Leeds is an example they have already done this um, of their own volition because they were so concerned about the impact of waiting lists on their own hospitals that they set up schemes to work evenings and weekends, and we've talked through with them how they did it. Um, we will use them around the country now, and they've agreed to this. They will go across the country to be deployed to help set up the model in other hospitals as quickly as we can. So I can't say by date X it will happen, but um, we've already had quite some discussions about how will that will be rolled out um, from day one. And there will be other announcements from... Um, various members of the Cabinet in coming days about the actions that we're taking on a number of fronts. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, Toby. Prime Minister, congratulations on your uh, victory. Um, one of the things that many of your MPs and people who voted for you will be hoping to hear early on in your premiership is some commitment to tackle the issue of child poverty. Can you give a guarantee that you intend to get rid of the two-child cap on child poverty as a first part of that process? What I can... I mean, the, the, the answer um, today is no different to the answer a week ago, you'll be pleased to know, because um, I said some tough things in the campaign because I meant them, and I wasn't going to uh, do what others had done, which is to uh, say sweet things on the way in, uh, only to do a press conference like this two days later or three days later, saying uh, we can't do any of that. And so... Uh, Two-child um, uh, benefit is an example of that difficult decision 
uh, absolutely understand how difficult it is, how important it is, and I'm not shying away from that. Um, uh, but you know, we, are, we intend to have economic stability. We intend to uh, ensure that uh, we stick to our rules, and that is why I can't make commitment on the two-child benefit. What I can say is this. Uh, we have, and we're already setting up the child poverty strategy, um, which will uh, deliver a reduction in child poverty. I'm determined to do that. Um, it will be a measure of what this Labour government does, just as it was a measure of the last Labour government that drove down uh, child poverty. I don't want any child living in poverty. Um, and so that strategy um, will be developed, um, and as soon as we're able, I'll share with you more details uh, in relation to that. But um, the fact that I can't make the commitment on the two-child benefit does not mean that we're parking the strategy on reduction of child poverty. On the contrary, it makes it all the more urgent, and we will be working on that and started on that already. Um, Kate. Prime Minister, um, can I just go back to the question of prisons? Your prisons minister, James Simpson, said precisely this. We are addicted to punishment. People are in prison who should not be, i.e. they're given a prison sentence and they shouldn't be. Do you agree, yes or no? And are you going to continue with the early release of prisoners? Very quickly, Rwanda scheme, is that dead and buried? Um, that's three, Kate, in one. Um, uh, look, the Rwanda scheme was dead and buried before it started. It's never been... Um, a deterrent. Um, look at the numbers that have come over in the first um, six and a bit months of this year. They are record numbers. Uh, that is the problem that we are inheriting. It has never acted as a deterrent. Almost the opposite, um, because everybody has worked out, particularly the gangs that run this, that the chance of ever going to Rwanda was so slim, less than 1%. Um, that it was never a deterrent. The chances were of not going and not being processed and staying here, therefore, um, in paid-for accommodation for a very, very long time. It's had the complete opposite effect. Um, and I'm not prepared to continue with um, gimmicks that don't act as a deterrent. Um, in relation to early release, look, we are, as I've actually said before the uh, election, we're going to have to deal with the problem we've got with prisons. Uh, there is no sol overnight solution to the problem. We've got too many prisoners, not enough prisons. That's a monumental failure of the last government um, on, on any basic view of government to get to a situation where you haven't got enough prison places for prisoners it doesn't matter what your political stripe that is a failure of government it's a failure of government to instruct the police not to arrest uh, this has not had enough attention in my view but it's what happened um, we will fix that but we can't fix it overnight and therefore it is impossible to simply say we will stop the early release uh, of prisoners and you wouldn't believe me if I did say it. In relation to prisons and, and, and the people that are there, look, I, I've sat in the back of I don't know how many criminal courts and watched people process through the system on an escalator to go into prison. And I've often reflected that uh, many of them could have been taken out of that system earlier if they'd had support. Um, and uh, that is why what we want to do with our youth hubs uh, and on knife crime is really, really important because... Um, I want to reduce crime. I want to ensure less people are going into crime. There is a point of intervention, um, I think, uh, in uh, the early teenage years of children, young people, um, I think particularly boys in my experience, um, where we can reach in and um, ensure some of them do not get on that escalator. It's difficult, it's hard work, it can be done. But if you can pull people out before they get on the escalator that ends up in imprisonment, that means that they have more productive lives and that they don't have the victims um, of their offences. Knife crime would be an example. Um, it is a clear priority for me on knife crime, and we will begin that work very quickly on knife crime um, to reduce it. Um, but one way, there are a number of ways that uh, are, are included in that, but one way is to reach out and stop people um, getting into knife crime in the first place. Difficult to do, but I'm determined to do it, because otherwise um, you and I will all sit at the back of courts watching the same people being processed over and over and over again into our prisons, where it costs a fortune to keep them there um, and uh, doesn't have the same effect on reducing crime that we could have if we intervened at an earlier stage. Thank you, Kate. Uh, uh, Genevieve at the Sunday Telegraph. Hello, Prime Minister. Uh, given that it is your view that the NHS is broken, are you happy with the performance of the NHF, NHS Chief Executive, Amanda Pritchard, and will you be keeping her on? Uh, look, 
um, uh, uh, this is not aimed at the chief executive of the NHS. It's a reflection on the failure of leadership of the last government. Um, but it is a raw honesty about the state of the NHS because we will not fix it if we aren't honest. It's a tough thing to hear if you work in the NHS. Um, obviously, my wife works in the NHS, as I may have mentioned. But it's tough because if you work in the NHS, you're putting a huge amount in in difficult circumstances. It's unrelenting. Um, but, um, you know, we have to be honest about this. It's broken, and our job now um, is not just to say who broke it, the last government, um, but to get on and start to fix it, which is what we will be doing, and West Streeting has already started on that work. Thank you. And then Mikey Smith from the Sunday Mirror. Your cabinet has more members uh, that went to comprehensive schools than any before, if I'm not mistaken. How important was it to you that your top team reflect the country they're going to be running? And quickly, if I may, should we expect any more peerages to be given to experts so you can bring them into your team? Uh, just on the first question, I'm really proud of the fact that my cabinet reflects the aspiration that I believe uh, lies at the heart of our country, the aspiration that so many people have, uh, wherever they started from, um, to make a journey on li in life um, for themselves, for their families, their communities, and, and ultimately for their country. And I said that at the, shadow, at the Cabinet meeting uh, this morning, that I'm proud of the fact that we have people around that Cabinet table um, who didn't have the easiest of starts in life, um, but to see them sitting in the cabinet this morning uh, was a proud moment for me and for this changed Labour Party and a reinforcement of my belief in that aspiration, um, which is a value uh, that I use um, uh, to help me make decisions. It's an anchor uh, for uh, me. In relation to future peerages, well, look, I don't want to get ahead of myself. We are uh, making further appointments this afternoon in relation to the front bench um, but I think you can see from the appointments I made yesterday um, just how important they are. You know, Patrick Balance I think anybody who knows him knows um, his commitment to delivery, James as well and of course Richard Hermer um, as Attorney General who has already taken the opportunity um, to make clear the importance of the rule of law uh, in the decisions that we take and the way that we operate as a government. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. What is the national question? Uh, um, thank you.